Hello, everyone, and welcome to Test Kitchen Live. Happy January. Happy New Year. Thank you all for joining, whether this is your first or maybe it's your 10th or 11th or I don't know what we're even on now. But thank you for taking the time to join us tonight. We're going to be beating the winter cooking blues. How many of you have the cooking blues after the holidays, uh, after getting together with family and friends and making all the yummy food? Maybe it's not so exciting to get back into the kitchen. We're going to help you with that tonight. We're going to show you two really fun and easy recipes um, that kind of have a little unique spin to them. So um, my name is Sandy. I lead the culinary team here at Pampered Chef. Man, how many years have I been here? I, I have to think of 10, I think 10, 11, 10. Anyway, it's, it's been a trip. It's been a great time. And I'm so excited to be here with you guys tonight. Um, why don't you put in the chat, where are you guys all watching from? Where are you watching from? Uh, do you have the cooking blues and are you team Christmas tree still up or are your holiday decorations still up? Yes or no? I want to know. That's kind of a, uh, it's something to debate. My Christmas tree is still up. The ornaments are down, but the tree is still up. I'm holding on to a little bit of uh, the holidays. We also have Abby. Abby, what about you? Your tree up or down? My tree is down. Oh, okay. I still have wreaths on the front door. Okay. But the rest of everything came down. Yeah, okay. I'm really excited to be here. It's a new year. I bet we have some new people watching. Welcome. Chef Live tonight. So that's really exciting. And I have a few housekeeping things to go over. So number one, definitely participate in the chat. I'm going to be watching and we're going to be picking three winners from the chat tonight live on Zoom. So if you're watching on Facebook Live, join us here in Zoom so you can be a part of the giveaway because we're going to be giving away three of one of the products we show tonight. Uh, we're also going to have a survey at the end of the show where we're going to pick one more winner from people who take the survey. We love your feedback. We always want to keep making Test Kitchen Live better and better for you every time. So please give us your feedback in the survey. We also have a handout that shows all the recipes and the products that we're doing tonight. That's in your email that you got from Zoom. So check that email for that link or reach out to your consultant so you can have all the details of the recipes and the products. And what else am I forgetting, Sandy? Um, that it's a snowstorm here. It, it is a snowstorm <laughs> here. So we're going to try our best to not have te technical difficulties tonight. But if there are, we just want to tell you guys in advance that we're going to try to work through them and have a great show tonight. But it is snowing here in Chicago. <laughs> so, and we, you know, who knows? We might get snowed into the test kitchen and have to have a slumber party. We've been joking yeah, about plenty to eat. Yeah, plenty so, to eat. yeah. All right. Sounds great. So I hope you guys grab a warm, comforting beverage and let's get cooking. We're going to be starting with our brand new recipe. It is a slow cooker sloppy joe in the deluxe multi-cooker. Um, Abby's going to share some exciting news about, well, I'll spill the beans. The deluxe multi-cooker is on sale in January. She'll tell you a few more details, but what a great time to get, get the deluxe multi-cooker. Of course, it could pressure cook. It could slow cook. It could sous vide. It could make yogurt, it could sterilize, and it can sear. So right now, to start my sloppy joe recipe, as you can see, I just have some lean ground beef um, on the sear setting, breaking it up into pieces. This is gonna take a couple more minutes, so I got it started before you guys join me. And of course, I have my mix and chop spatula. Go ahead and put in the chat if you guys love this guy. Um, we love our mix and chop, but our mix and chop spatula also has these nice drain holes when you're serving ground beef or taco and you want to drain it. Um, I'm not going to drain this fat in here because there shouldn't be too, too much. And it's just kind of going to be part of the sloppy joe. So I'm going to let this go. This is on the sear high setting. So the sear setting has three different settings. Low, which is great for sweating or sauteing vegetables. Medium is good for searing, and then high is good for stir frying or browning meats. So that, that's what we have this on. Um, and let me remi remind you, a typical slow cooker doesn't have a sear setting, right? That's what's so great about our multi-cooker, that if you're pressure cooking or slow cooking, you could start building flavor with that sear setting, which is going to make your recipe so much better. If you were just to throw ground beef in a slow cook recipe, it wouldn't develop the color, the flavor, the texture that you're really going to want in that sloppy joe. Okay, so next, what's fun about this recipe, it's got some veggies. I'm not sure if I would call it hidden veggies, but because of that slow cook process, the veggies get nice and soft. 
Um, and then you could trick your family uh, and your friends and they won't know that there's too many veggies. Usually a sloppy Joe just has something like onions. Um, and you can also switch up these veggies too, if these don't work for you. I have carrots, two carrots, a zucchini, I already chopped some, and then an onion. And the trick is to get these cut nice and fine. So I'm going to use my food chopper for my carrot. We know we talk about the food chopper and the manual food processor all the time. And that there's definitely room in your kitchen for both. Let's do the food chopper first. This is great for those hard vegetables like carrot. That. Perfect. And of course, those blades rotate every time you go ahead and press it. So you know you're getting nice, even cuts. It also comes with this little, um, what is it called? A little cup. So that if you want to chop nuts or something right on here, you don't even need a cutting board. Um, it also serves as a lid. So that's really cool. And then I'm going to do my zucchini and my onion in the manual food processor. Actually, let me keep chop. I just did a couple chops on that. Let's get it. We all know be fine. And of course, oh, look at that. Of course, the manual food processor is great because the more you kind of pulse it, the finer it gets. So you have some control over how coarse or how fine you do your veggies. So pretty. And it's really great for things like salsa, guacamole, dips, because it will mix and chop at the same time. And it comes with a lid. So you just take the blade out, pop the lid on, and you can save your dip or your sauce or whatever that is. April said egg salad too. That's a good one. Oh my gosh, April. There's so much you can do in the manual food process. Perfect. I always forget that it has a lid too. So it's so nice to save those guacamoles and I don't know. I don't have leftover guacamole. Uh, in my house. What am I talking about? That's so true. That's so I true. guess if you had leftover salsa. Uh, I think we have like a strawberry dip where you Ooh, like combine yeah. yogurt and strawberries. Who's like daydreaming about like warmer weather, summer recipes right now? Well, my dessert is gonna kind of bring you back to summer a little bit. And that's okay, we deserve it. So I'm always team manual food processor when it comes to onions. I feel like it makes me cry a little bit less. And the, again, I can kind of control the chop, but I know a lot of people use the uh, food chopper as well. <laughs> like in a matter of seconds, you have all these perfectly chopped. Onions. You could add celery to this recipe, mushrooms, bell pepper. I think it would be cool to maybe add some beans to the sloppy joe, give it a little more fiber. Okay, so I'm gonna add, let's check on my beef real quick. Yep, we can add some veg. Gosh, who doesn't have a uh, mix and chop or mix and chop spatula? If you don't, this is just such a lifesaver. See, and I got some good browning color there in the multi-cooker. It's not like that gray meat, got nice and brown. Here, you can even see, can you see? Okay, I'm gonna add my veg. They're gonna cook for just a little bit. And while they cook, we're gonna chat with Abby for a couple minutes. Yeah, so I want to talk about the multi-cooker. There's a lot going on with the multi-cooker at Pampridge Shop this January. So it's $100 off all January long. So that's super exciting. Um, in addition to the multi-cooker being $100 off, we also have a sale on all the multi-cooker accessories. So Sandy's going to show you the glass lid later on is one of the options. And we also have our slice and serve and our rapid pop mandolin on sale this month. So the rapid pop mandolin, Simple rapid 
sorry, simple slicer <laughs> and rapid prep mandolin. What and we're going to show my bad. <laughs> we're going to show the rapid prep mandolin later in the show. So we'll show that. Also, it's a new year. It's time for New Year's resolutions, right? And some of those are eating healthier, having more time, maybe spending more time with your family, maybe making a little bit of extra money to do some activities that you want to do. It's a really great time to become a Pamper Chef consultant if you're interested. And our pits are 24% off this month. So it's 2024, 24% off, whichever launch bundle you choose. You should really reach out to your consultant that invited you to ask them more because not only is January a good time to get 24% off your kit, but in January, all of our consultants started working towards earning a trip to Walt Disney World in 2025. So we're all really excited. We're all really in the magical spirit of Disney around Pampered Chef these days. And in January, consultants are earning extra points. So it's a really great time. All of 2024 is the earning period. So getting in now and earning and getting those points in January is a really great getting off to a great start. So we're really excited about Disney around here, aren't we? Uh, yes, we are definitely a Dis pro Disney company over here. <laughs> I love Disney. Who doesn't? Um, let me talk to you a little bit about Deluxe Multi Cooker and what you get when you buy this bad boy. Uh, first of all, love the cooking guide that comes with it because it's going to walk you through all the different functions. As I mentioned, pressure cook, slow cook, uh, sous vide searing we even have an egg function that you just press you put your eggs in a little bit of water press the um egg function and it perfectly hard boils your eggs really easy to peel put in the chat if you guys are a big fan of that i love it because you just press it and kind of walk away until it beeps you release the pressure put them in an ice bath and you're all good um what else do we have i love the charts in here so you don't have just to rely on the recipes if you want to understand how to make steak, pork chops, tenderloin, uh, chicken thighs, even chicken from frozen. You can do that with amazing results. Um, part of, go ahead. What about rice and beans? Oh, we have some yes. questions like, is it easy to do rice and beans in here? This is the only way that I might make rice, actually. It's one cup of rice rinsed, one cup of, I might get it wrong, one cup of water, a little bit of oil, a little bit of salt, white rice setting, four minutes, that's it. It's so hands-off and your rice gets really nice and fluffy. Beans, you can make dried beans without even having to soak them. Thank you, Abby. So great. Um, what was I going to say? We also have a, good, a few getting started recipes in here. Oh, my soapbox. I don't know where my recipes are. But my soapbox, uh, here they are. That typical one-pot meals, here they are. Like this pressure cooker chicken parmesan. Like if you were to make something on this stove, it would be good. But when you make it in the pressure cooker, it really locks in all those flavors because of the high pressure, locks in those flavors and makes everything like even more delicious. So, so much to love. I hope the chat's blowing up with people cheering on the multi People are sharing their favorite ways to use the multi oh So, gosh. yeah, I mean, you're sharing a lot. But cooking from frozen, I think, is the most popular, right? I think like, so, too. Getting dinner done. Yes. And snacks. soups. Yeah, I have to say soups are really great, too because everything cooks really evenly and it's kind of no guess, right? Sometimes when you cook a soup on the stove top, you're like, how long do I simmer it? With this, press the soup setting and you have delicious soups and stews. What a great time in January, right? To be, and budget friendly, right? Even this recipe, like super simple ingredients, this can make a really great budget friendly meal. How good does this look? Nice veggie heavy. Okay, so before I add my barbecue sauce and ketchup, I'm just going to switch it up with a little bell pepper herb rub. This is not in the recipe, but our rubs and seasonings are such easy ways just to boost the flavor of everyday meals. So my family loves bell pepper herb, really herby with a little sweet um, taste to it. Love it on potatoes, meatballs, veggies, pasta salad. I love it in pasta salad. So please put in the chat what you guys love it. I want to show it to you because it's actually, I think, one of my favorite rubs because it's so pretty. Look how beautiful that is. So really herby, a little sweet. I'm going to put a little less than a tablespoon in there. You could also put honey sriracha in there. Uh, smoky barbecue. I think smoky barbecue. I love some smoky. I'm not a smoky. I think no. honey sriracha. Would, be would that be yours? Yeah. You could put so many different options in here. All right. And then I'm going to add my liquids, which is just a half cup of ketchup. 
course with our measure alls makes it so easy. You can measure, of course, liquids. These are measured on the solids side just because it's so easy to push them out and you're not losing any of it. Great, and then I have a couple tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Say that fast a couple times, I'm not going to. And then just a tablespoon of brown sugar. Really easy sloppy joe recipe. Easily customizable too. Let's get that all mixed up and then I'm gonna pop the lid on. If you have a couple chunks of vegetables, that's okay. I'll going get cooked through. It's smelling pretty good already. Right? Alrighty. Great, so I'm gonna pop on this pressure cooker glass lid, which Abby mentioned is one of the accessories that's on sale. Uh, you wanna go ahead and use this glass lid only when you're slow cooking sous vide or when you're on the warm setting. Another thing that I love about this glass lid is that if you wanna pop your leftovers in the fridge, you can just remove the inner pot and use this glass lid. Um, in the fridge. So it's really great. When we slow cook, it's nice to be able to look as you cook. So you can, of course, use the regular lid. Um, this is what the regular lid looks like. Of course, we love it so much because it can prop up here when you're just kind of not needing to cover your pot. You can use this lid when you're slow cooking. That's totally fine. But again, we love to kind of look as we cook and use this glass lid. You'll probably notice there's a little hole here. That is so our thermometer actually could fit inside that little hole and can be temping your meat while you're cooking. So that's kind of nice. All right, I'm gonna come on over. Press cancel, get it to slow cook. And it's already slow cook on low for eight hours. Don't worry, we're not going to make you wait eight hours. <laughs> we Although bet. with the snowstorm, <laughs> eight hours no. I said if there's a snowstorm, we'll have plenty to eat. Don't worry about it. Um, we actually have one that's been going all day. It's smelling so great. Andy, can you repeat when it's good to use the glass lid? Sous vide and slow cooking? Anything else? Sous vide and slow cooking, or if you're just on the keep warm setting. Okay. So after you pressure cook, there's an option to just go ahead and let the machine switch to keep warm. So let's say, you know, your family, everybody's coming home at different times to eat. You can just keep your food right on that keep warm setting and use the glass lid. So then you don't have to like keep locking and unlocking the regular lid. So of course we've got a little bun, but you could serve your sloppy joe over a baked potato or uh, a baked sweet potato. What else guys, put in the chat how you would serve your slow cooker sloppy joe. And you could do this with ground turkey too. That's totally okay. I feel like it should be messier, don't you guys think? <laughs> I feel like it should be like, that's what a sloppy joe is all about. I think I had, um, here we go. I love these guys. These are saute tongs, which are really great um, for kind of serving and plating, but are actually really nice for cooking shrimp, scallops, even bacon, things that you just need to kind of... I'm, I'm going in on the pickles. I don't know, Abby, what else would you serve with your sloppy joe? Cheese, the hot sauce. Chips. My <laughs> husband loves to put chips on Inside? Sandwiches. On the sandwich. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I totally understand that. Jardiner, you're a Chicago person. Okay, I'm gonna. Fresh tomato slice. Ooh, yum. You didn't sound like tomato yum. You sounded like that was like, like gross. That was a, ooh. <laughs> yeah. Because you know what? I was thinking of putting raw onions on it too. And I don't know if you guys know, but I'm not a huge raw onion. I'm not a raw. Okay, but sure. tomato slices would be great. Um, one more thing about my little saute tongs is so great is that they fold up for like such easy storage. Like they're just so easy to have in your kitchen, these guys. Um, I love them. I could get carried away with these. <laughs> okay, 
All right, we are going to start thinking about desserts, but I think Abby has some fun news to share before we do that. I do. So, like I said earlier, thank you guys for being here. We love to reward you guys um, for participating in the chat. So we do have a giveaway tonight. We're going to be giving away the bell pepper and herb rub to three of you. So our winners tonight are Christy Fewins, Marla McDonald, and Pamela Weeks. Congratulations. We're going to be sending you the bell pepper and herb rub, and we'll reach out to you guys after the show to get your shipping information so we can get that into your kitchens. Ooh. We get a lot of love for the bell pepper herb rub. Yeah, I saw one person was suggesting to put it into goulash. They said that's really good. Soup. So that's a great idea. It's really great in just like a um how do I want this? And just like a dip, like a cream cheese and sour cream dip. Really yummy. Delicious. Okay. So we're gonna be making some Greek oh. yogurt bark. So put in the chat if you've heard of Greek yogurt bark. But like Sandy, what the heck are we doing here? But it really just kind of turns into like frozen goodness. You know, who says after the holidays we have to stop with our treats? This one just happens to be a little bit better for you. So I'm starting with two cups of this is full fat Greek yogurt. I would recommend full fat or 2% because it's going to freeze better and stay creamier. If you use that non fat, it's going to get those ice crystals. And I'm going to eyeball this about two tablespoons of honey. You could use agave. You could use maple syrup. This is just going to add a little bit of sweetness. Mix this up. And this recipe is so fun because there's so many different ways you could do this. Different fruits, different toppings. And then you're going to take, this is our large sheet pan. And I just added a little strip of parchment paper here because it's going to make it much easier for the bark to release once it's frozen. So that's it. I'm going to go ahead. Oh, I actually have a little, a little trick. You put like just a little bit of this on the bottom. That'll help it stick. So it won't oh, that's smart. <laughs> A little baking put in the chat it's like a baking trip if you do this with like yeah frosting too it helps <laughs> why can't we do it with greek yogurt you guys know sandy sandy will find a way to find <laughs> put greek yogurt into every recipe she possibly can believe it or not i took a little break from greek yogurt. i think i was tired of it but there's just so many uses. And you're supporting your heritage. I am. I am a great girl. So I'm using, oh, so dreamy. I'm using our icing spatula to even this out on the parchment paper. This has got this nice long blade that's really making it easy to make it all even. Who's, uh, who's got the icing spatula? Obviously got a lot of work during the holidays, frostings and icing. And it's a newer product. Yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people might not have it yet. So maybe this is the first time some of you are seeing it. Who's it's dying to make this Greek yogurt bark? You gotta get your hands on this. And the holidays aren't, you know, aren't the only time you're making baked goods. Valentine's oh, Day is coming up. Good call. Twist. It's always a good time for baked goods. Absolutely. And it's so pretty too. All right, that's looking pretty decent. I could be doing this all day because it's so, I feel like I'm like spackling, like <laughs> painting. It's so tiling. It's enough, Sandy, it's enough. Okay. Catherine King said, OMG, is that a new spatula? I need one. Yes. <laughs> Look it up, icing spatula. Okay, so we're gonna add some strawberries to this guy. Again, so many ways you could customize this with different fruits, different little crunchy toppings. So I'm going to use uh, the Rapid Prep Mandolin, which is also on sale this month. This is one of my very, very favorite products. So many ways to use it. And I'm going to show you. But first, we're just going to slice some strawberries. You might be saying, Sandy, we've got the cup slicer. We've got the simple. We have so many ways to slice strawberries. But I'll tell you why I love using the rapid prep is because I can make them really thin. I'm going to use a number three setting and I'll show you these th 
settings in a minute, but number one is the thinnest, which is one millimeter up to eight. So three is still kind of on the thinner side. And I want little thin pieces of strawberries so you're not biting into a big frozen punk strawberry. Beautiful are these strawberries too, by the way. Can you so guys good. see how like bright and vibrant these are? So you need about a half a cup of strawberries, but again, this is like a no recipe recipe. You can switch this up based on what you want. What other fruits are we talking about, Abby? You could do kiwi, you could do banana on here, berries. Blueberries, raspberries. I mean, I'm a big Big berry girl. Are you? Yeah. Strawberry. Um, you could, we even talk about pomegranate seeds, right? Like you could do anything you want. Anything. And it's still it's sweet really and delicious. Like drizzled peanut butter. I really want to drizzle like chocolate sauce all over it. I think that would be really delicious. That's, I mean, I want to drizzle, <laughs> drizzle chocolate sauce over everything in my life. Pretty much. Okay. Ooh, pineapple, apples, nuts. Oh yeah, nuts, granola. And look at how pretty it is. You're kind of like, you know, I said I was like painting. This is kind of like your little canvas here. I just love it. Okay, let's just add, I had mini chocolate chips. I like the mini ones again, because when they freeze, they're a little bit easier to eat than the regular one. You just go nuts. And then Sandy, how do you store this when you're, you know, yeah. pulling it out? So on when you, I'm going to show you, once you pull it out, you're going to want to go ahead and break it up into pieces. And then you want to store it broken up into pieces with parchment paper, kind of in between each piece in the freezer for up to three months. It's just fine. Awesome little snack. Right. And so much cheaper than, you know, like when you buy the like chocolate covered berries at the grocery store in the frozen section, those are so good, but they're so expensive. This is so much right. more cost like, effective. Like the Greek yogurt bars. I love those yeah. too. And those get really pricey too. All right. Great healthy snack to just have around. Love it. Okay. Before I pull out um, the other one, I just wanted to make some cute, quick cucumbers. You guys don't mind if there's some strawberries and cucumbers, do you? I want to put some quick cucumbers to serve next to my sloppy joe. So I'm going to also do, what was I going to do those? Yeah, I'm going to do a little thicker. Maybe slice on uh, number four. See how that goes. What do you guys think? That looks perfect, right? Do those. So I know there could be a lot of questions about the rapid prep on what setting do I use for what food? And again, it really kind of depends. If you're shaving Brussels sprouts, which is Abby's favorite, shaving Brussels sprouts, um, slicing them really thinly, you want to do setting one or two. Mm -hmm. If you're doing really thin, thinly sliced radishes, maybe for a chili or a salad, one or two is great. But if I'm like, hmm, what do I slice it on? I usually just pick somewhere in the middle, like yeah. four or five or something like that. You can't like go that. wrong. You can't really go wrong. I did want to show you really quickly if we want to see what julienne would look like in cucumbers. Let's go to julienne and I'm going to do eight, which is going to be thicker because cucumber has so much water. And look what you get. Julienne just means matchstick. So you get these little matchstick cucumbers. I like this with apples. You, you like cut apples into a, matchsticks? I like, love a cucumber salad with like a vinaigrette and like a red Same. onion. Yes. yes, I love cucumber anything. But that's just a little idea. Oh, I was also going to slice it on, um, I don't know if I have a little bit left in there. I wanted to show you the number one setting. See how thin it is. I think I have a little nub. that someone even said you could use the little matchsticks like a short zucchini noodle if you did zucchini in there, of right? course you like could small yeah that's exactly what you're doing is julianning zucchini so love this guy so many options i promised you i was going to show you more of the back but slice julienne cuts the perfect french fry cut it all goes into the dishwasher so much to love i love it for um stir fries Oh, yeah. You just pop all your vegetables in there. Zucchini, carrots. Or think like an omelet bar for your family. Like everybody pig. I love that. All right. 
Let's so how long does this need to freeze for before oh, yeah. it's ready? Good question. This is about three to four hours. Yep, and you could tell it's nice and frozen. Let me see if I can break it apart without, oh yeah. I have, I've had this sitting on just a couple minutes. Okay. This parchment paper is really gonna help you. You don't even really need a knife. Just kind of break it into chunks. There you go. All right. So with that, that is the wrap up of our show. A couple of things to share that we do these live events every single week on Tuesdays. So reach out to your consultant to find out more or go to the live event page um, on pamperchef.com to see how you can be a part of these every single week and learn these fun tips and tricks and recipes. We also invite you right after this to go to our Facebook page, um, Pamper Chef or Pamper Chef Canada um, to find a little bit more about uh, what it's like to become a Pamper Chef consultant, what the opportunity is all about. So we invite you to that. That's about 10 minutes. We'd love to see you over there. Um, what else do I have to share? The survey, Abby mentioned the survey after this, please take it. You might win another bell pepper herb rub. Yeah. And we always want to improve uh, these events for you. I'm going to stand for a couple questions. Uh, we get some good questions. Yeah, we have a few questions and I forgot to ask in the beginning or tell you guys in the beginning that we do have a handout that goes with the event. So the handout came in your email from Zoom telling you that you registered for the event and it has a list of all the products we use today and the recipes. So that's a great resource. And if you can't find it, reach out to yourself. So Sandy, does the glass lid get hot? Do you have to use like a, to you should. use something to pick it up? You should. Yeah. Yes, you should. One thing I didn't mention that we do love about the deluxe multi-cooker. This isn't part of the question, but I'm going to tell you anyway. <laughs> the deluxe multi-cooker was really built with safety in mind because you can see it's cool to the touch. And also the steam release button and where the steam comes out are actually far away from each other. So you press the steam and then the steam comes out here and it's gonna beep a couple of times to tell you. So you can, you know, make sure to move away and the steam kind of shoots out at an angle too. Um, so we love some of those nice safety features. It's not your grandma's electric pressure cooker, right? And you'd have to take a spoon and release the pressure and get you We there. actually have a slide. Let's pop up the slide to show the sale that multi-cooker price. So everybody can see, because this is really such a great offer for the simple slicer, the multi-cooker, mm -hmm. and the rapid cup mandolin, and the accessories for the multi-cooker. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I mean, I'm just reading through a lot of compliments. Looks amazing. Yes. We're beautiful. Like, I, I don't know what, what questions am I supposed to I'm wearing. <laughs> No clue. My sister's sweater. That she loves. <laughs> um, what about okay, eggs, egg bites in the multi cooker? Mm -hmm. Would you suggest? Is there like when you use that mold, you have so, to use it in the multi cooker? You wouldn't want to use it any other way, right? No, we actually have a blog that shows you different ways on how to use it. Oh, yeah, we have a few. Uh, is in the air fryer. And in the oven, there's a few different cool. ways to so make So there's advice. multiple ways to use that. Yeah, there's oh, if you just search it up in the blog, it'll show you a couple different ways to use it. Cool. Yeah. Um, our team in the back is just answering these so quick that I'm like, which ones should I ask you? So do you know how long it takes eggs? I mean, there's multiple ways to do eggs, right? Mm -hmm. So you can do the egg bites or hard boiled eggs. Mm -hmm. do you have hard boiled eggs, I believe it's about 10 or I think it's 12 minutes. So it takes a couple minutes for it to come to pressure. Then they cook for about 12. Then you go ahead and release the pressure immediately and put them in an um, ice bath. Yep. And then, so to, oh, Jackie's answering it already. Oh, okay, last question um, about sous vide. So sous vide, you can use either lid, right? Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Really easy. Well, guys, thank you so much for sharing. We hope you're having a great January. We hope to see you throughout the month and the other live events. And um, stay safe.